And once again, we return to the hallowed halls of the greatest institute of magical learning in the Four Kingdoms. This is Book of Dawn Ioth Academy. I'm Tormented by Gnomes, your Game Master. Joining me for today's story, we've got Crowen and we've got Lemon Kiwi. Crowen, what's new with you? Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. It is good to be back, getting back in the swing of things in Japan for a couple weeks, and then partner visited, and I just left like yesterday, so getting to uh, catch up and back in Ioth Academy land. Hell yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Lemon, saw the announcement today. Congratulations. We go again. Yay! Another one. Another <laughs> one. The kids would say. Yeah, fun, and another episode of our short mini series. And it's just us our... two. I don't know if we've only done just a me and Crowen thing. Have we? I don't think so. I feel no. like we have it. <laughs> we always have like the mediator of Battle <laughs> <Lord> <laughs> here. And there's no <laughs> like there's they no do the no. Velociraptor thing. He's watching somewhere with regret <laughs> <laughs> of what's about to transpire with us. Just got a bucket of popcorn. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fuck around here to find out this episode. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Race is like, I've had enough of your shit. <laughs> Dark Academy hands. We're going to therapy now. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of therapy, when last we left our heroes, Mason, Fantisco, and Inril Untermaller had just. <clears throat> Mason, Mason's Fantisco and Untermaller had just traveled to the tribal lands of Bothotlo. There, the ruling dragon, Juldret, and the leaders of the different clans of the tribe were gathering to discuss how to answer the threat from the solar empire of Brontha. Our heroes from the academy presented evidence that this conflict had been instigated by an ancient conspiracy of infernal forces, deliberately plotting to pit Brontha and Bothotlo against each other. It was a difficult conference because the injuries inflicted by Brontha were real, even if the motivations behind them were false. Nonetheless, our heroes successfully convinced the Bethotlands to allow Ioth Academy to act as a mediator between the two, putting a pause on the potential for imminent open warfare between the two sides. While they were there, a strange youth not only flirted with uh, Sventisco and dissed Mason, but also revealed to them the identity of one of the members of the tribal council who had been replaced with one of Imago's mirror clones. Afterwards, this stranger demanded to know how Orn, the silver dragon god, died, also known as Mirik, the shadow master. After some hesitation, Mason and Sventisco told the tale to this kid, who revealed himself to be the dragon god Bethotlo. He bestowed his blessing on Sventisco and then left to tell the other dragon gods how what had happened to Orn. Mason and Sventisco had a heart-to-heart -heart about their relationship. They bonded, and then Inril rolled up and took them back to the academy. Any details that I need to throw in there or anything that I might have missed that you want to point out, Crowen? No, I think that... Uh... About sums that one up. Okay. Meanwhile, in the solar empire of Brontha, Garnet returned to the place of her birth with her teacher, Master El. Now, there she was reunited with her mother, the general who'd spent the last few years searching across the sunswept lands for her missing daughter. She too was on a mission to convince the Bronthans not to invade Bothotlo, presenting to them evidence that. They had all been deceived, and that the attacks by Bothotlo were instigated by a conspiracy of enemies. She was successful in persuading the council on their side to allow Ioth Academy to act as mediator, helped by the appearance of the spirit of her dead father, who manifested before the council in order to give them guidance. When Garnet returned to that same temple, he appeared to her as well, assuring her that she was not alone and asking her not to throw her life away in order to avenge him. Garnet also discovered mirror clones amongst the, her people, just as Fentisco and Mason discovered them in Bothotlo. And after executing the mirror clones in a display of shadow magic, Garnet returned home. But not before Pevon, the warrior to whom she was betrothed as a child, said that he was still willing to fulfill that promise. And Inaros, 
a mysterious and alluring Bronthan Azamar told her that she should have been, she should be the next priest king, giving her quite a bit to think about. Did I miss any key details you want to throw in there? No. Okay. I think we're good. <laughs> Our story resumes as both of these two young heroes and the teachers and adults who went with them return via teleportation circle back to the academy. Garnet has arrived a little while ago and already had a conversation with the fellow Bronthan, Ruby. Imminently, you will be summoned to a meeting in the, con in the, uh, the council room, the, the chamber of the Muintiori, the rulers of the academy, to debrief everybody. There's already been some sending spells passed back and forth between the Archmages, the Masters, updating them briefly with each other's information. But it's time for everyone to gather together and come up with the next phase of your plan. Before that summons is issued, do you have any business you wish to tend to? Not individually. I think, I think so. I can bring Mason to talk to somebody, a little cool. student. Cool. Yeah, we're good. All right. So you're ready to go ahead and just get um, knock, 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 called forth? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So we join our heroes, once again in the heights of the spire, in a sealed conference chamber, warded by powerful magics, with some of the wisest wizards and sorcerers in all the four kingdoms of Anakra gathered at this table. Master Elnau is seated in the big chair, although technically Inril is seated in the big chair, but it's just a bigger <laughs> version of the small chairs. It's not the big chair, you know right. what I mean? <laughs> Master Sig, Master Puabi, Master Yeldrin are all in attendance, as are Garnet, Mason, and Sventisco. What's going to follow the opening course of business, as Elnau will go ahead and summon everybody to order, with a very flat tone, just sort of requesting the information and that everybody reveal everything so they can make their next course of action. You are now up to speed on everything that has transpired with each other's missions, or at least the high-level stuff. Untermaler explains how he talked with the various clan leaders of Bothotlo, their concerns, their suspicions, their grievances. Master Elnau flatly relates the story of what happened in the council, with considerable detail, not really leaving anything out, except for personal matters that Garnet may have dealt with that either Elnau is not aware of or that don't necessarily concern the entire operation. Now, everyone is on the same page. Unless either of you speak up or have anything immediately to say, they're, the grown-ups are going to start going back and forth, probably asking you some questions. Do you want this chance to intercede? Yeah, I think Mason would speak up after everyone's kind of like on the same page and just kind mm -hmm. of generally ask do we think that Bron well from what Otholo asked for that Brontha will pay for you know damages sort of thing and then stand down and retreat and actually make Otholo tribe happy with what they want because they wanted kind of a lot everybody what? looks at Garnet wait so what did they sorry out of character here what did they Re the, the reparations that they want to get explained yet? Because we don't know about no reparations. I don't know if Are they've listed specific demands yet. Yeah, it's just probably some of them wanted like a lot more. I think on average, it was like at least they want something, mm -hmm. but maybe like you, not like anything like huge. You can throw out everything that the mirror tabaxi said about making them come cook food for us and stuff yeah. like that. That can all be <laughs> safely discarded. <laughs> that was the mirror clown there. They don't, yeah. they don't get an opinion anymore. I will also point yeah, out... Yeah, true, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so wait, is everything that happened with Mason and everything that happened with me like being shared and now we have all that information? Or You're allowed to decide what is and is not public information. The status of the Bothotlo tribe is public. Everything that the council said in front of Master L now is public. Your converse... Oh, and the situation with the mirror clones, what you did to them, that's all public. The situate any encounters you had alone, such as speaking with your father or converse, private conversations you had with your mother, 
that has not been revealed. But oh, okay. It, I was just like w thinking about the Tabaxi mirror clone because then. Yeah. But if we want to chat reparations first, I just wanted to know what we know and don't know before yes. I go. Spit Pretty bars much here. everything. <laughs> Pretty much everything except for the really personal stuff, which you can decide what is and is not revealed. Before we proceed, you have all been blessed with the light of the pearl, the gift of the moon goddess Railta. For the next hour of real time, you have advantage on all insight checks starting now. Hmm. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, I some kind of sursa inside <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even said anything yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't got to wait that long. Holy fuck. Uh, okay, so they want reparations. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, can we just take back what, what, where, how, what, how this conversation started? I got to get in the... Sure. Everyone brought everyone on the same page. Mason asked if, they, if people really think that Brontha will be okay with that, with making... Um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Not reparations, like, yeah, reparations, but like when you, when you give something up, when you give ground concessions, making concessions in mm -hmm. order for peace to, because Vatholo has said that if they actually want lasting peace, it's not enough for them to just piss off. They've been wronged and they want it to be made right. The two suggestions... I mean, I have some suggestions for reparations, but the idea that I had was that I think we should all be happy with peace. I think we should come together in unity against the Infernals. And if I'm being honest with everyone at the table here, looks at Mason, no offense, Mason, but Patholo needs us more than we need it them and i'm i think there are some ways that we can be mutually beneficial in terms of helping them with technology information equipment on getting rid of the mirror clones and also acting on their infernal uh contact and allowing us to access whoever that is or just acting on their infernal connections and it kind of depends if they're still willing to stand by that infernal relationship that they have because that will also determine whether i think any one of us at this table would want to still be in cahoots with them um but if they um keep talking back or trying to get greedy with any of us i mean they also incited war against ioth and brontha by coming after my mother and injuring our soldiers while we were trying to protect me and her so i i think there's forgiveness to be given in multiple directions, but I, I'd rather just suggest the mutually beneficial solutions first and see where that goes. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm not the one that you have to convince Garnet. It's, I mean, they'll try, but obviously it's very messy in terms of perspectives of both sides and who thinks who's really more in the wrong and it might be true that Batholo needs Brantha more than the opposite but if they don't see it that way maybe sometimes one side has to give a little bit more leeway than the other because we are looking at big picture here right we're looking at taking on the infernals and trying to stop in front of influence from you know picking ourselves apart we should be uniting together and i mean it's difficult politics and all that people thinking they deserve one thing and other people thinking they deserve something else well they can choose to hide and be uninvolved if they don't want to fight alongside us that can be the best option for them but you know when infernals can lurk in their dreams steal their children through mirrors speak into their minds and influence people of the council maybe they'll want to consider fighting with us but again i did you get a sense of what their relationship is with the infernals was it just to get back at brontha or are they anti-cycle will interject here and Garnet, you notice that one set of, like, some of her hair, there's a streak of her hair that is 
made of metal now, made of copper, but it moves just like normal hair. He says, The Bothotla tribe has no relationship with the Infernals other than an adversarial one. There has been no collaboration between the Infernals and the Bothotlo tribe. The actions, the attempt on your mother's life, were the actions of a covert agency that is not affiliated with the Bothotlo tribe. Kepesk and his secret society. That attack was not condoned or sent by any of the tribal leaders. Wait, out of character, this is like a third party organization coming in for the publisher type of thing, or like, yeah, Kepesk had his like secret group called the Faithful, the ones who were all into the Silent City, Seven Dragons thing. Um, and Svantisco says it was him and his like secret group of, yeah, some of them were from the Pothotla tribe, but they were acting on their own, they weren't acting on behalf of the tribe. They are all members of Kepesk's cult, and therefore we didn't do it. Okay, back in character. Well, Kepesk was. We know he's a miracle, and right, like out of character. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. But if Kepesk, you know, still ordered this, so we're just gonna forget that Botholo was. He was part of Batholo and maybe influencing them to do other things? Like, we're just Bethotlo completely forgetting... People. People descended from the tribes of Batholo. Not people acting on behalf of the Batholo clan. If humans did something, we're not going to hold all humans accountable for one group of humans. If one wizard somewhere does something evil, we're not going to hold all of Ioth Academy. We're not going to take... I have Academy to task for the deeds of Tarselmore and the students that he sacrificed. Or oh, Alex, even. Nor Alex. Well, the council, the Tholo council claimed to have not known anything about this and were completely uninvolved and mm -hmm. fine. The council seemed very much in opposition to Infernals. I think we're on the same page, or at least want to be. Well, to reiterate, it sounds like we could always use more allies, more, more people to help us. And I think in exchange, it would be beneficial to us to get rid of more mirror clones, so sharing information on how to detect them, any spare equipment equipment we, we might have, um, to just have more control over everything. And, I don't know, this third party, the faithful, are they still around? Are they still a threat? Our wardens have neutralized much of their network that was present within the settlement outside our sphere. But we don't know the full extent of their influence throughout the ten tribes of Okarthal. They may still be a factor. But with Miric removed and with Kepes removed, we believe their threat is minimal for now. We believe they are currently in disarray. Well, we could, as a favor to Batholo, you know, say that we can act on ridding the rest of the faithful if they are so against it. It'd be easy for Ioth to locate them with divination magic and execute them. And that could be yet another favor that benefits all of us. Yeah, I think that would be a step. Garnet, you're currently discussing relations between this school and the Pothotlo tribe, which are a separate matter from the Bronthan and Pothotlan matter. As I understand it, you are saying that as long as that conflict does not go into open war, it can wait. Do I understand you? I'm thinking Ioth Academy and our resources can be a bargaining chip 
because IELTS Academy needs allies just as much as we need everyone to get along right now. I'm sure Brontha could do these favors if our resources are low too. It's just magic does everything a little bit easier. Elle now steeples her fingers together, sort of rests her head on her fingertips. Hmm. So you're suggesting that we go to Brontha and Batholo to get their assistance in against Diphraxis and the Dark Academy, and then postpone the our offer to mediate between the two of them until after this is handled? I was thinking we can just mediate it and just have them join us here to protect us from Diphraxis. Hmm. Unless they feel like they'd rather be in their mountains, but if they hide away, then we're not going to help them get rid of mirror clones. We're not going to help them with any information on the Herald dream magic or any ways that the Infernals can reach into their mountains. So if they don't help us, we're not helping them. But as far as they're concerned, that is a separate matter from their differences. I'm Do you telling understand? Them to what forgive. It? Yeah, I'm just saying to everyone, everything is forgiven, peace and love, and here's our way of doing peace and love, of helping each other. That's what allies do as a way to convince them. We need to be on the allies step first before that happens and the separate matter thing. Santisco says that's not going to bring back the dead. That is the burden that my people carry with them are the lives that were lost when Bronthan soldiers and Phoenix Knights came to our homes looking for infernal influence that wasn't there. That is the point of contention. And that is a lot of factors to consider in that tragedy. And it's being very delicate with her words, like as Fantisco Knowing is at the table. In Fantisco's family. Yep. Um, first, I would explain that the primary blame should be on the Machine Prince and killing my father and causing, uh, you know, my disappearance and having Merrick, um, you know, pulling the strings on Merrick, kidnapping me and keeping me away. And the Infernal's chasing me into hiding. But part of that blame is also on me for not... For not making a better decision to make contact with Brontha. But I would explain that as a 8 or 10 year old, insert age here, was very scared and made the wrong decision. And I don't think I could have done any better with the experience and knowledge that I had. But I'm hoping that they would just grant forgiveness and place their anger towards the machine prince and unite with us in punishing him and that hopefully their secondary anger could go towards me for being the reason my mother chased uh, and raided all the cities. You would take all of that responsibility onto yourself? The secondary anger of just falling upon you as opposed to all of Brontha? Obviously first is going to be machine prison for influence, yes, but... Why just you over all of Brontha? You didn't make the decisions to invade and, and kill a lot of Batholo. Right. There was probably some... I mean, after discovering the Mirror Clones in Brontha, we, I can assume that there was some influence in maybe guiding those decisions. I didn't detect any in the Council, but the Council did seem very war hungry for whatever economic or power reasons they may have to just flex their muscles the, it was guided by my mother because of me and i put the blame on me because i'm an independent they're not going to go to war with ioth they're not going to go to war with brontha they're mad at me i'm not you know i don't really feel like i'm a representative of either right now and i'd rather them blame me and maybe they'll stoke that fire because i was a child they're not gonna freak out as much but i'm hoping that they're understanding but if their path forward is just killing more people that's stupid I that's neither think... fair to you nor just garnet and then she'll let mason speak 
I don't think the path forward wants to be to kill more. And if you're not acting as a part of, you know, anyone, no Brontha, no anywhere else, then I don't think they would really want to find blame in you. That isn't on you, I think, in the eyes of Bethola. As much yeah. as you want it to be, I, I don't think that that would... Well, they need someone to blame, and it can be me, and if they... We can't bring back the dead, but we can prevent more tragedies from happening, and if they want to not fight, that's fine, but they're not going to get the information they need to fight against the Infernals that can go into their dreams and mirrors and shit like that, but I'm hoping that in order to prevent more people from dying to the Infernals, which I would still place all of... 90% of the blame of everything happening on the Machine Prince for conspiring all of this that they'd want to fight against him and prevent more of this from happening would be the idea. But I am not, we don't have the time to be playing all these checkers with Batholo either. They can take the offer and where they can hide away and die. I, I'm sorry. It's, we don't have time to waste on these people if they're not going to play, play fair. My people aren't doing anything except not wanting to get killed. Rantha is the one who's on the attack. If Rantha decides not to attack, if you've convinced them not to attack, then that's great. But there's not going to be any alliances and there's not going to be any healing unless there's justice first. And you aren't the one who wielded the sword and you're not the one who stained your spear with blood. Even if the Infernals manipulated it and they made you the center of it you're not the one who did it even if they were manipulated the damage and the harm is still real now if we're just looking to keep everything ramshackled together until this crisis is over i think we're already there but if you're serious about this offer to mediate between the two people then i can promise you that unless justice is done, there cannot be healing. So there's Fentisco that, talking? Yeah, that's Fentisco talking. By the way, she is being super, super confident. I'm not just like speaking at Cathedra as the DM here. Her whole demeanor seems almost different. She's calm, she's confident, and there's this like fire to her voice, this warm glow to her voice as she's sitting up, perfect posture, nice and straight, very focused. And what justice do you want, Sven? And she'll lean over and look at her. Parent for a parent, then? Do you want to kill my no. mother for the, all of this? No. No. Who do you want to kill to make this all better? Nobody. Nobody. Then it's settled. We're not attacking. We have better things to do. Those are two separate things. This being settled or not attacking. If you give your word that Brontha is not going to attack, then my people are going to be okay. But they're not going to be, it will not be just. The answer to this harm isn't more harm, it's healing. No. I am not the head of my clan, and I don't speak on behalf of all of them. But I have personally suffered from this crisis, and it will be enough for me, for Brontha to help us get through it. But for the others, the only way is to listen to them and see what it is they believe will make them whole. And it's not going to be killing more people. I think our protection and our knowledge would be more than enough to repair things and that's I up Academy doing something for Bathotlo. That's a good thing. That can happen. That's not Brontha undoing their damage, making right what they did wrong. I would think that IOTH Academy doing this service is part of the allyship between them and Brontha, and if... 
if I broke your stuff and then I sent somebody else to make something for you and give it to you to replace it, that's half-assed. The thing is replaced. Depends on the person's values at that point. <sighs> Those values might never see eye to eye. If we're on the topic of, yes, if Brontha will withdraw forces and not attack and... I think now that we know that there are potentially more steps to, well, not potentially, there needs to be more steps for the sake of healing. But I don't know if we're going to agree on those steps right now. And like Svantisco says, yes, Svantisco has suffered, but it's going to take a lot of Brontha specifically listening to what the members of, you know, the Council of Bethotlo want and so maybe we should push that matter back and deal with the stuff in front of us right now darn it if the bothotlo tribe takes no hostile action against brontha do you believe that brontha will reciprocate i mean they'll listen to me good we have pledged to offer ourselves as mediation between the two sides. We have not committed to a timeline. And that means that we can defer this matter to handle other concerns. The crisis between Bothotlo and Brontha is not resolved, but it is delayed, and that may be enough for now. There are two other matters of greater strategic importance. First is Diphraxis and their imminent attack. We are undergoing measures right now to secure the refugees in the settlement outside and we're preparing our own forces to meet them. That is a matter for myself and the wardens, unless anyone else at this council has something to add or a concern to address. Well, I have a character question. How mm -hmm. does Ith Academy know that Defraxis is going to attack again? They have sources. They have spies out there. Um, sources. Okay. Sources. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, there are some Ioth Academy teachers who have made contact with the Dune Riders who can move through the desert, through paths nobody else knows, and paths that go by Defraxis. And mm -hmm. they've seen, like, the war forges just spewing smoke day and night as they're, and they're, like, collecting all the iron butchers that are running around and herding them into packs. They're getting ready to go to war. Okay, and that information also had, like, to the best of their knowledge, confirmed that it was going to be against Ioth Academy. Yeah, it's retaliation or, for Ioth Academy's weird, unexplained, nobody knows why oh, they did it. Attack right, because they, they know Ioth Academy was there, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. yeah. Okay. This is retaliation. But yeah, Untamal is basically saying, hey, I'm in charge of our armed forces, so unless anybody has anything to say about that right now, we can move on. There will be more to say, but he can say it when, there's, when there is more to say. Does do any of the students have anything any concerns about that? Yeah, um, Codex research and students revealed a, a few vulnerabilities uh, for attacks. One being the spheres crack and other things. The entire barrier is weaker as well. Uh, secondly, there seems to be some kind of transportation between here and the other world. Not sure where or how, but obviously the Fey problem. We don't know if the, I mean, the Fey aren't really conspiring with the Mirror Clones or with the Infernals, but if there is a teleportation circle here between here and the other world, I don't know if that's a path that can be taken to get here. And thirdly, um, a student approached me about Alex being spotted at the Academy. And I've yet to follow up on that information, but I just wanted to point that out, that he has found his way into the academy somehow. Everybody's mumbling and talking. It's one of those, you say something, everyone, oh, 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 sort of situations. Hmm. It may be necessary to make some concessions to the Seely Queen to secure that particular boundary
It would be within her power to prevent unwanted crossings if she puts herself to it, but she will not do it for free. Does that weaken our position for the future? Yes, in these blasted fairy games, every time that we go to them and ask for something, the alternative is to work up spells of our own, and we have our hands full with preparing for open combat. If we choose to take our time to secure that, to work great magic to secure the other world... El now will pipe out, especially since my predecessor went and thinned that barrier by draining everything into that damn book. ...will leave us less prepared for Diphraxis' eventual attack. And the uh, students have been looking for something to do, maybe some low-level alarm spells. Could have the students get involved to just at least have eyes on wherever this teleportation is coming from? Yes, yes, I fear nobody will be able to truly remain a mere student in the coming times. That doesn't... I mean, obviously things have to be done in that way, but is that a concern for just Iath Academy in general moving forward? Obviously these times are... Everyone knows it's dangerous everywhere, but... I don't know. It just seems more so as of late. Feels like a good internship opportunity to be able to use your magic in a real-life scenario and pose it as just... A Instead of going to class, you can go apply your spells, and I know the fuck, fuck them, is that what they're, they're called? The, the Fae Society? The would... technical <laughs> name is the Court of Reverie, and as befits their demeanor, they have chosen an obscene anachroni- uh, acronym for themselves. I'm sure they'd be, I don't know how they'd react, but if we could have them you know, skip some classes in order to just watch over the Fey teleportation circle so that, you know, give them some responsibility. I am confident they would be amenable to that request. I hope these times pass and we can allow our students to be students again. El now just goes, unlikely. Let me delay this no longer. We have located the Book of Dawn. Oh? Yes. Independent research by students piecing different things together and our own efforts to track... When Alexander reached forth and meddled with this academy, he tipped his hand. That surge of power could not be missed, and we have tracked it to its source. We know precisely where Alexander and his academy are. The sage is here, right? Or no, she's fucked. She's fucking... Yeah, she's an Onderud. We should go get it, right? Is that not... Well, is the Diphraxis thing going to happen before we can get it back? But if we get the book back first, that would surely help a lot. Elna will speak up and says, I think the obvious thing here is the book. It has to be the top priority, right? It's a devastating weapon. We know we have some time before Diphraxis arrives, and if we're going to split our efforts in any way, getting the book seems like the right one. And what about neutral what about our plan to neutralize the book? That may be necessary. I, f- I would feel better about doing that so that if we do approach, we're not going to get zapped out of existence. Yes. Their academy is situated in a valley not far to the north, several hundred miles. A river valley nestled amongst the mountains at the foot of Mount Kithior. Out of character, the very mountain where the El now blew the top quarter off of in her battle against that dragon. Seems awfully close. I can't speak to why. I can tell you that they have a sphere much like our own and will likely have potent magical defenses all anchored by the book. Without your countermeasures, Garnet and El now, I doubt we'd have any chance of approaching. How do you know they have a sphere? 
We have sent eyes to look in person from far above. Who? Puabi smiles. Nothing more than a bird flitting through the clouds. Our master transmuter is a man of many talents. This guy's been at every meeting so far, right? Who has? A Puabi? Yeah. And he was there at the battle against Merrick, and he was there at the battle against Alexander. He's one of the uh, higher level mages. He actually didn't used to be that high level, but with so many, you know, battlefield promotions going on, he's become one of the inner circle members. During fights, he's mostly buffed people. Could you go more into detail about how you just went to the Dark Academy and came back? I changed myself into a bird, and I flew far above, and I looked down, and there it was. Did you have any wards on yourself? Any divination magic to cover the fact that you're not a bird? I was one bird of countless others, miles above. You don't think you were detected, spotted at all? Okay. How sure are you? I can't be sure, sure. Well, we could be with other magics, right? Things we've done before, ask the forces of the universe. I mean, uh, that was Rednop's specialty, but the sage is quite adept at such magic. When any of us, some of us should be able to perform it, and when she returns, she can put her mind to it as well. Mm -hmm. But even if I was detected, I doubt they have any idea what it is that you're planning, Garnet. I'm planning. We're planning, El. Now we'll we'll chime in. Our countermeasures, the only possible means of neutralizing a weapon of infinite possibilities. Kind of looks at Puabi. Did you become a mirror clone uh, before you came back? No. Can I insight check with advantage? Yes, you can. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Ooh, lucky. El now will take out her gem of seeing. And look at him and just run it over everybody in the room. And set it down. He's fine. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> just, <laughs> narrator, she didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't. Oh, maybe me Garnet's looking a little sparkly, a little, little mirror I don't oh, know. Oh, that's just the conditioner, babe. <laughs> <laughs> He's worth because she's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, but it might, for the Doc Academy, it might change their actions if they know that we know where they are or not, regardless of the neutralizing the book plan. But what control do we have over that? Without knowing where they were, we're all firing in the dark. We can't base everything that we do about what they may or may not know. We can cert It's important, but we have to spend as much of our energy as possible coming up with tactics that will be effective regardless and contingencies for different scenarios, whether they know or they don't know. So mm -hmm. now, the matter is, do we strike before Defraxis arrives? Because if we do, we could overcommit ourselves, chop off the heads of our own leadership, and leave the Academy defenseless. If we don't, then we leave the most powerful magical item in the Four Kingdoms in the hands of the enemy while an army is at our doorstep. I think Mason looks to Sventisco not as like a way to like have her like say her thoughts to everybody, but Sventisco has been in like, you know, bad bitch mode for a while. So feeling confident. So Mason's just like at least like privately like curious about what Sventisco thinks on that matter. He, like leans into her. Look, I'm not a general. I don't know anything about armies. I know a thing or two about little smash and grab operations. And I think this is too big to miss. It's just nods at that. Um, if I had a suggestion, I think 
we're safest while all together and splitting off to go deal with the Fraxis or go deal with the book uh, leaves us in weaker points. I would say we could wait uh, here for Defraxis, where it's safest, under the protection of the barrier and everyone here. Also being able to protect the students, which would be our number one concern. And just try to act as much remotely as we can, whether with neutralizing the book, you know, fireballs outside the academy, what have you. I feel like we'd be best acting defensively than offensively uh, until we neutralize the book. So a full defensive force against Defraxis and then a full offensive force against the book? Is what you're proposing? Just, or near full? Well, the Dark Academy haven't really done anything yet, right? Like, towards us, besides the whole memory? Or what are we calling it? Like, whatever dawn magic thing that was? Some I attack. Have a proper taxonomical name for it yet. I think if Defraxis is going to show to be the biggest threat right now in terms of actually coming to our doorstep and doing something, although I am concerned with Alex roaming around the halls and what exactly he's doing here, yeah, besides who's... trying to recruit, I don't know. You said a student told you of that? Yeah, I'm going to have to check with my source before um, ratting them out here. <laughs> so obviously, I want to keep that source confidential. For their protection. Sure, telling you all won't really incite them to tell me more, but I just wanted to tell you guys so we can keep our eyes open for Alex. How could he possibly be slipping in like that? That's why I brought up the barrier vulnerability and then the other world connection as two options, but I, I just feel like that shouldn't be possible. Because we've d gotten rid of most of the mirrors, too. You're right, it shouldn't be possible. Mirror transit would explain it, but... There's got to be something else. Either he's just using the book to make the transition, or the barrier is indeed weakened, or there's a secret path we're unaware of. If he was using the book to make the transition, would it be detectable, much like whatever that other thing was with no, the that mass was a, amounts? No, that was on an extremely large scale. That was a very large change, I guess, because it affected all of us. Yeah. But if he just were to walk up alongside the sphere, I suspect he could pass through it with barely a ripple. Mm -hmm. Hard to detect, then. Okay. Him personally. If he wanted to cast it open wide so that an army could march through, it'd be much more noticeable. But for one person to slip in and out? And well, I guess he's not very far away with, I mean, where we know that Dark Academy is, so I guess that makes more sense. Garnet. Mm. My concern. If Alex was able to affect all of our minds, from hundreds of miles away. How confident are you that a countermeasure can be developed before Defraxis arrives? Because if we have no such protection when they arrive, it will be the perfect time for him to strike again from afar. Uh, out of character, how... <laughs> what's my ET on my mask? Mm. Building. You, uh, you spend like a day or two on it, you think it'll be ready. A day or two? Yeah, possibly less. But you'll need to go in hard and completely focus on it. Okay. Um, I'd be able to begin the ritual in a day or two to neutralize the book, and then we won't have to worry about it, and the sooner the better. El now looks around the room one more time, as if giving anyone else the opportunity to say something. But whatever she's about to say, uh, she's now holding Ioth's staff. She's about to speak authoritatively. She's about to lay down the law. Last chance. Here are, are our priorities. Number one. 
developing the countermeasures for the Book of Dawn. Number two, securing our internal perimeter, magical and physical, particularly to see if we can find out how Alex is coming and going. And if he does decide to wander into our halls, is he vulnerable then? If so, we take advantage of it. Three, we continue our magical and mundane defenses in preparation of Defraxis's attack. I wonder, Garnet, if Brontha isn't going to be sending that army that they've been rallying into the Badlands. Perhaps some of them would like to fight for a different righteous cause. Yeah, the righteous cause of trying to get rid of the mirror clones that currently exist within their walls. That mm. is their biggest priority right now. Mm. What do you have you in mind? You don't think there's going to be any help for this? I mean, they got to protect themselves too. If they leave to come here, that leaves their people vulnerable. Think they could send anything? Or is it everything they have? But are swords useful for us when we can just fireball everything? I feel like we're better at, we're better equipped to defend them ourselves. We are not infinite in number. DM question. Mm -hmm. How many students would know fireball? <laughs> like the war enough. studies. Yeah. Fifth year um, up. If you're fifth level, you can cast fireball. And y'all are sixth level because you got a little bit of an oomph boost. Uh, but everyone else at your grade is fifth level. So, like, there's at least several hundred, if not thousand students that can cast Fireball. I know y'all would hate the idea of this, but I really love internships here at IELTS Academy and applying magic to real-world scenarios. <laughs> Untamaler, what do you think about your... War Mage class, you take everyone, all your students to the wall and have them practice some fireballs on the Defraxis army. I don't love it. I feel like a lot of students have been scared because they feel like they, they're a little bit helpless in this situation and they don't feel like they can contribute anything and if they feel like they could at least fight back, that would be mutually beneficial. Elna speaks up. Their childhood's already ruined, Inril. What are you concerned about? What happens to the academy if a thousand students fight and a couple hundred students die? Then we uh, still exist to train the next generation. We are very low on choices at this point. I agree with Garnet. Well, we have the fifth level insert year of class people who do fireballs and the lower level students have protection spells of barrier insert shield mage armor i don't know off the top of my head anything buff wise guidance stuff like that if they you know they can do it while in the walls and then the higher level students would then be buffed up to be protected against any fire against them and I'm just saying that them being involved would be helpful. Give me a persuasion check, Garnet. And Mason, are you agreeing with her? Mm. Roll. I'm going to use a luck die. Uh, at least at this point, I don't think Mason's either agreeing or disagreeing right now. Okay. I have a debate club roll, too. Yeah, give um, me that d4. Okay, we tried. <laughs> Untermaler sighs, and it's a big bovine. <laughs> desperate times, Untermaler, desperate times. The sheer numbers of Defraxis are going to be too much for us to handle if we just do the teachers and us, right? Which is why it would be helpful to have an elite cadre of warriors on the ground like the Phoenix Knights. Yeah, Oops, except always if hold they, the field. 
Yeah, except if they come here to protect us, then that leaves Brontha vulnerable to attacks. And if Defraxis goes and attacks Brontha to bait me or us out of our sphere, then we're just going to be baited into a battle where we're less protected. Then at what point are, are we going to be able to combine our forces? Because that risk is going to exist no matter what we do at any point during this process. At what point will we be able to meaningfully ally if we can't go to each other's aid? Well, the attention is on us, right, for going to Defraxis, for Alex and us being in disagreement. So I don't feel like the target is on Brontha's back or anyone's back other than us. And I'd rather everyone just try to protect themselves from the Infernals and just have the target be on us. That's possible. But if the target is on us, then like you're admitting, then shouldn't Brontha be safer than usual? I don't really know who's safe. Nobody. That's all now. Well, I have the staff. Untermaller, make the preparations. Every student capable of casting a spell is going to be using it one way or another. I'm not going to let this academy fall before I even take charge officially. All right. We focus on countering the book. We focus on internal defense. We focus on external defense. These remain our priorities until we weather this storm. Then we can revisit going on the offensive, reclaiming the book, disintegrating Alex, whatever else comes to mind. Any objections? No? Good. Dismissed. And she taps the staff of Ioth on the ground twice, and uh, the various masters stand up, bow, and then walk out to begin getting to work, doing their thing. She's going to sit and cross her legs and just stare across the table at her. She did not like being dismissed with that staff. Mm -hmm. She's very, like, does not like being ego checked by Elle now. It's just going <laughs> to stare her down. Mason probably uh, is dismissed and leaves. At that okay, Sventisco so goes with. Looks back at Garden not moving, being like, oh, that's, that's going to be something. <laughs> And uh, it still leaves though, maybe like hangs around, like you know, outside the door or something, mm -hmm. waits, but uh, yeah, leaves the room. All right, uh, El now is going to wait for everybody else to leave and shut the door behind them, and then leans the staff up against something and goes, Yes, Garnet. I don't like the way you dismissed me, I dismissed them. Just gonna just stare at her. It's just not happy. You don't seem satisfied. No, because you're interfering with uh, a lot of my plans and things that I'm thinking about, and you're just causing disruption, and it's annoying me. All right. Brief me on everything. I don't like that you took in void corruption as a way of getting back at me. It was not retaliatory. Well, it felt that way. It wasn't. I can clarify that for you. Well, ever since you've been catching attitudes with me, and I don't appreciate it. Hmm. I see. Well, that's not my intention. And what is your intention? To work as effectively as possible to fulfill my duties as the Archmage of this Academy and to protect you and to make sure that you have all the opportunities that I want you to have. I 
She'll walk up to her, mm -hmm. say, I haven't reported your void corruption business to the sage or to the others, but I don't think they'd appreciate the potential new archmage to be as corrupted as you are right now. And what about her pupil? I am but a student. I am not the archmage. Garnet, I don't have any desire to be at odds with you. Frankly, this is a waste of time. We should be focusing our efforts on the device that you came up with and the process that you came up with so that we can protect everybody that we care about. Trying to undermine me is just going to harm that. But you undermined me by not trusting me and you wasted time instead of just accelerating our studies where I should have been in the first place. Well then, how is what you're doing right now going to make up for that lost time? Or enable me to make up for that lost time? It's a conversation about whether you're fit enough to be the Archmage. Well, you're not qualified to make that decision. I'm qualified enough to tell those that are. There aren't any. You None really of them this... were trusted by Ioth to take up this role. Those are my qualifications. In that regard, I'm willing to use whatever magic is required to fulfill those obligations. Statue didn't seem to agree with you. I don't answer to a statue. You don't answer to Ioth? Ioth is gone. If that what changes, about the sage's wishes? The sage isn't one of us. She has an advisory role on this council. Nothing more. Ioth entrusted me with the safe care of this academy. If he comes back, he can have it back. And I'm not undermining you because you aren't even you anymore. I don't even know who I'm looking at. I'm your teacher. I'm Master L now. And I have spent the last five years for you. And then you threw it all the way to take in void corruption for whatever reason. I literally could not think of another way to prevent you from doing the same yourself. You're very stubborn. And I lack the insight the wisdom, the knowledge to reach you. So if you can't reach me, you expect to reach all the students at the academy and call yourself a qualified Archmage. I don't have to be their teacher. I'm not required to attend to their emotional needs. I'm required to attend to the administration and protection of this school. And I'm eminently capable of doing that. This is how much I still care about you. I haven't dismissed you. For anybody else, this would be a complete waste of my time. It isn't because it's you. Even though we should be working on developing those countermeasures. You can stay. You can talk to me. You still matter. Giving me permission to talk to you is not a sense of care, but you don't, thank you for permission. the privilege. It's not permission. You don't need my permission. So I suppose you'd need consent, but that's irrelevant. The point is, our attention is focused in the wrong place. Perhaps when this crisis has passed, we can revisit this matter. Yeah, and I dabbled in this void magic so that I can become more focused and keep my vision towards the Book of Dawn. And now you're getting in the way of that by becoming a liability by taking in void corruption yourself. And you're so close to the staff and all this responsibility that if I, if I fell to void magic or 
Seosh or whatever, then I'm just a student, but you're the Archmage. You weren't supposed to get meddled in all of this. Then I won't fall. Oh, great. You took on those steps in order to become more focused. I'm more focused than ever. My purpose is completely clear. I have no distractions. Well, I'm still here and clearly a distraction. According you're not to a distraction. You. You're a priority. Well, you said this was a waste of time. For anyone else, it'd be a waste of time. I'm wondering why you're choosing to spend your time on this. But I value you, so we can continue to do so. I do think we should work on our research, though. I will withhold my report to the sage, but don't appreciate your attitude. I think you could be a lot more warmer. Would I be more effective? You were a lot more effective before. You mentioned that I was interfering with your plans. I want to make sure that I understand them so that I can avoid interfering with them. Is there anything else I need to be aware of? No. Are you ready to begin our research or do you require some additional time? I have to follow up with the Alex source. So I'm going to go with Mason and work on the mask later. Contact me when you're ready. Leaves. Mm -hmm. I see his car walks out the door. Just, oh, um, are, are you are you all right? Just glares at Mason. Oh, hey. Did you listen to all that? Nope. Just was, um, I mean, everyone was dismissed. You were waiting around. I assumed you had some other business. I wanted to catch up with you after it all, though, so... He's not lying, by the way. Those privacy spells are gnarly. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, should wait. Mm. Um, don't you? And she's in a foul, like, pissy mood right now. So, uh, don't you have to tend to your girlfriend about killing my mom for killing your her parent or something? Is Fen still there? Do you want oh, her to still she? be there, or did she go? <laughs> I was gonna say that if she wasn't there. Would, uh, I thought okay, it was let's say, let us say if if you're fine with it, bro, and let's say that yeah, she's. Yeah. Gone off to do kids' job stuff. All right, cool. Okay, so we'll just say no. Were there any talks of killing my mother that you were entertaining while on your trip? Also, no, Garnet. Oh, the okay. The price so of things doesn't have to be killing. Well, I presented can... other solutions that other people didn't seem to be a fan of. And we'll just start walking i gotta go talk to somebody you're good at talking with people right uh, that depends on what it's about i suppose i can accompany though <sighs> you're in a better mood than i am about this so you'd be a much friendlier face to get information <laughs> okay let's where are we going who are we talking to uh hill, is it how do i say the name is it hilda or hill Old name is Hildegard. Oh, it's my middle name, actually. So <laughs> well, damn. <we> go <laughs> Gotta go talk to Hildegard. Is All right. Hopefully you will not share the source with anyone, including your girlfriend. I can withhold that. I don't... I guess we can just skip the and your girlfriend part, because I when I say something is a secret, that means yeah. just us. It, uh, baseline secret yeah i i got it <sighs> okay well and you think this well the source you think has to be a secret because you want hildegard to keep telling things to you well that and don't want her to face any backlash for reporting the alex sighting from anyone including alex himself when was the Alex sighting? Or were there multiple? You've just won, and I don't know all the information by heart. I think this was communicated to me a week or so ago, so they would have the info. Mm -hmm. Now, 
for the upcoming scene, do you want to, because there's some information that's buried in DMs and there's going to be slow communication back and forth since we have a community student involved, do you want to sort of glide over this and just broadly state your objectives? How do you want the scene to go down, Jen? Oh, yeah, we can probably just get like, just have a list of questions and then just mm -hmm. answer it at a future time, I guess, okay. which would just be like details around like where, when, you mm -hmm. know, um, how sure they were that it was him, where was he going, the mm -hmm. mood of the, the stuff, whatever questions Mason may have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the two of you go to meet with one of the chief officers of the Court of Reverie, aka Fuckum, which I should remember. I have the acronym, the full acronym somewhere, because it's always a lot more fun when you read out the whole thing and then say aka Fuckum. But you have a, a covert meeting with Hilda to confirm those reports. And while we won't be acting on them immediately, I will make sure that we get access to that information and I will read it out loud on air next opportunity I get. Perhaps next episode, we'll see. That said, because you brought Mason along to talk and be in a good mood, I am going to have uh, Crow and make a persuasion check. Sure. What it determines, I will leave to Mama Shimada. <laughs> who's Could I help and give him advantage at least? Uh, can you in your current uh, foul mood? That's a huge question, well, not a me question. I feel like sh she said in the DM, or they said in the DM that they trusted Garnett Mm -hmm. with this information and not sure who else so i feel like at least the trust factor of at least me being there mm -hmm. and saying hey just trust me bro would be enough help that they yeah we'll do we'll do we'll do advantage okay. on this okay. and again i think this encounter is going to go over and you're going to get the information but the nuances matter right you're dealing with fairies yeah. the nuances always matter okay at 23 nice all right three not bad all right. I think they were fine with Mason. I think it was just their anti-codex, but fine with me. Yeah. So... And Prius recently had a huge blow up about them and their organization. So probably don't mention this to him. <laughs> right. He was popping up like there was a vein just in his temple. This 15 year old just absolutely seething. Just high school drama. Yep. <laughs> All right. After going through that and confirming that, what is next for our, our two young heroes? What do you want to do? Uh, I guess uh, Mason would say I'm. I don't know how much of this you want to divulge. I suppose, um, but I'm just curious. Like El now said, the number one thing that we should be worried about as an academy is countermeasures for the Book of Dawn, and you're working on something for that, right? I don't need all the specifics, but I'm curious about how effective do you think this will be? Is it like a guaranteed thing? Uh, not sure, because I haven't done it before. Hmm. Just... The equation makes sense of my head in my head of just counteracting the dawn energy with void it's exact opposite and just hoping that the two neutralize but how controlled of fashion it will be is sort of up to the execution at that point and fortunately unfortunately el now will be there to assist and make sure things go by smoothly um and the effect i won't really know because I won't know if the book is neutralized because it's not here or in sight. Yeah. Um, we'll have to be based on feeling, I guess. Okay. I I mean, I, I, I trust you on this. I know this is, well, not only a very, I mean, I guess a personal goal for you in a lot of different regards. It means a lot to all of us here. I, if you need any help with it, I'm very willing to do what it is that I can. You're a very calm person. How do you do this calm stuff? Yeah. You never seem mad or... Well, you're happy, I guess. Not overly excited, not overly mad. You're not overly anything. How do you <sighs> stay away from the overly part? Years of 
practice, I guess. That's kind of how I was brought up. I mean, I feel emotions intensely, obviously, like anybody else. I just, I don't know, check them quickly and try to balance myself. And I mean, it's kind of like through, like I've shown some kind of meditative concepts before. I just, I guess you could say my brain just defaults to those if there's overwhelming stuff happening. I'm not perfect at it though. I guess I'm just better at it than a lot of people. And what do you do if you're mad at someone and they betray you or something? I guess it takes like a longer pause. And I guess oh, <laughs> inside check, guard it. And see if the this effects is of the like... blessings of the pearl have worn off. No more advantage. No. On this. <laughs> that's fair. That's fine. But just like try to understand like what angle or like why Garnet asked that specifically. Yeah, thirteen. I guess would say like she's clearly mad at someone right now yeah, yeah. and is looking for different methods of dealing. Well, she's been mad at a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And has not dealt with those people in the best of ways and is looking for advice on what does Mason do when he's pissed at someone and absolutely livid. Yeah. Mason's like, when's the last time that... Oh. Well, what comes to mind is when I was a lot younger, my home was attacked by knights of uh Ternimbus. and so when they attacked the academy again there were a lot of motions around that and i really wanted to well fight back get revenge that sort of thing and well i think i nearly would have but well, help from others as well. I tried to steer that in a direction of what is most beneficial, right? If I, but for the long term, if I go in and I just run at these knights who were obviously more powerful than me and I get myself killed, what does that accomplish, right? What does that actually do? Nothing. It stops them uh, from attacking you and doing further harm. But it doesn't if I don't stop them. I'm not strong enough then. It just gives them more power. It, it in fact it's it's the opposite. It it gets me out of the way before I can actually do anything and gives them more rain, free rein to do whatever it is they want. So I guess it's just trying to well think of the best impact that I can do, and how do I get there? If my emotions are going to be really high about something, but I can actually deal with it right then, then sure, I can I can act on it. So and you're telling me to do fine. nothing and go to therapy? <laughs> well, the therapy part might be uh might be good, but do nothing. No, I don't think the, the answer always has to be do nothing. I think you have proven that clearly in some situations you're more than equipped to handle things. Like this Book of Dawn countermeasure, you've come up with a plan and it's, while it might be fueled by the emotions of the hurt of the Alex and whoever else, you can do something about it. And it's not just a, oh, I'm acting because I'm mad here, it's I'm acting with the benefit of not only yourself, but all of Lyoth Academy, right? Well, I'm always thinking about someone else when I act in certain ways. It just sometimes has a lot of drawbacks, but... Hmm. Last time Knights of Terror Nimbus came here, I killed Boreas, so that stopped them. <laughs> that it did. Don't you wish you, you did. did something like that? So you're saying if you could have, you would have? Uh, 
if I thought that I could have, I would have. I think sometimes you... Well, you tell me if you think this is right. I think sometimes you get into things before you're confident if they actually work out, but they do, and... I'm always confident things work out. Why, why I else suppose... would I even try it? Well, I, I think that's, that's the reason. I think sometimes it's easy for people to convince themselves that they know what's best and have an accurate idea of the situation, but actually don't. But I, I can't say that that is you, because the things you've done, yeah, have, have worked out. Well, if you don't Whether have confidence be... in yourself to do something, you're always going to fail, right? Most time, probably. Yeah. See, we're more on the same page than I thought, Mason. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know, yeah. it's just, it's... Yeah, what? If you had, you know, as much confidence as I had, you'd be killing alongside me. We want the same things, you just don't think you can, but I know you can. <sighs> I think no? that concept... <laughs> I just... I want to believe you, Garnet. I just, I think that concept is a little more trickier than just that, right? I don't, it doesn't always come down to confidence. There's, I mean, that's the reason why there's so many tales of people who are infinitely confident and they try to do a thing but utterly fail and are killed, beaten, whatever, right? That exists. So the confidence has to be mixed with ability then, right? Yeah, what's better, a confident person that fails or an insecure person who never tries? A balance between the two, I think. Mm, that's hard. I know. That's the point. I'd rather keep trying and failing <laughs> than, than just second-guess everything. I've been actually really sick of second-guessing everything. Yeah, I just think that sometimes when you fail, you don't get a second chance. Mm. Are you saying you think I'm going to blow up the school or something? I had a weird dream about that once. I don't know if you're going to blow up the school or get yourself killed or never lose at all and just keep on winning. I don't know what's going to happen. I just know that the potential for all of them is, is there. And it might feel better and better keeping succeeding. But that's even more dangerous in some regard. Sometimes you lose sight of well, how mortal you can be. Yeah, I'd just rather die trying to protect the people and yeah. I like in the school than second guess everything and mm -hmm. die not doing anything at all. Yeah. I I don't fault you for that, Garnet. I I I really don't. I just don't know if I could ever think of it in the exact same way, but that's Fine, we don't need to. And maybe that's good that we don't. Maybe having these different perspectives and still being on the same side is the best thing that we can have. Well, that's why I like being friends with you. You kind of, <laughs> you balance me out a bit. You and Athelore. <laughs> and I, I feel like, I hope I can help you guys get confidence and yeah. learn to just, just do it. You know? <laughs> I can confidently say I have learned a lot from my time being your friend, Garnet. A lot of things, and hopefully a lot more. I just, I mean, I, I don't know how worried you are, but especially with the Fraxis coming, and I know your plan of make students, maybe not make them fight, but have them fight. It's just, everything's happening so quickly, and with all of our ties into Infernal Business, it's, I just, I think I might always have some I don't know, second thoughts about things and just wonder my place in it all. And wonder your place in it all, not only from your perspective, but from mine and everyone around us. Uh, well, we all die someday. And it's all about us going to the next phase of life. And I hope that we can all go together when our time is right and whatnot. Uh, our role is to just do our best, and that's all we can do, right? Agreed. Random 
question, kind of something I was thinking about. I, I, well, I guess I should ask: Are you fine talking about Alex? Is that okay? What, what do you want to know? I feel like with Alex having Book of Dawn and doing whatever it is that he's doing, he might have been more proactive about attacking. Surely there was that one instance, but that was like, even that was weird. Did you expect him to do more by this point? Yeah, I'm actually still surprised to be alive right now. Um, I put the target on my back for a reason, as many scenarios as possible. Because I'm fine being the sacrificial lamb. Someone has to be. And... I am curious why he hasn't used the Book of Dawn. I just... I think it's just weird that he exposed himself like that. And he wasn't more subtle about it. Or... I don't know if his intention to alter our, our memory had to do with... That that oh I, we don't know who Quan is right so we got to say but you do know we, that you have a prisoner who you don't know oh right uh, we, we know the name too from the records right that's true yeah. you looked him up in the records yeah. oh right okay so yeah I don't know if that dawn magic explosion had to do with that Quan kid he meant to hit all of us but why just alter our memory about one person and not about him having the book at all. Why wouldn't he just make us forget that he had the book and do more? Would forgetting a person be... Any, even a former student probably take less than forgetting an entire concept that is very important to the school, I guess? It would have taken a lot more to do that? If we all know. forget... If we all forgot who Alex was... We'd all forget who has the book. Which makes me think also that true. he wants us alive for some reason. And he's stalling for something. I guess with the Book of Dawn having the potential to do literally anything, <laughs> that makes things a lot weirder to try to figure out any reasoning, huh? I don't, I don't really know. plan on asking him. I was just planning. I was just planning on disintegrating him. I guess you knew him some of the best of anyone. Did he ever have? I don't know. Um, reason? Like, did you know the reasons for doing the things that he did at the time that he was your friend? He like founded the Codex, right? And did the Clash of the Codex? Things like just any anything like that. Are there any patterns amongst all of it? I think like now she's gotten to the point where she's thought so much about Alex that now she's just like in a more foul mood. So she's just like walking faster. I just... His reasons are fucking stupid. Everything he does is fucking stupid. He took the book. He's going to get himself killed and more people killed. I don't fucking care what he's thinking. I guess just... Knowing what he's thinking could help us understand what's potentially coming next, especially if it doesn't make sense. Maybe it's something more simple than we think. If what doesn't make sense? A voice pipes up <laughs> from a nearby hallway. And you see a Lozrin carrying a pile of books as he walks up. And then he immediately looks at Garnet and goes, oh. I forgot about my interactions with him. I don't think I even interacted with him. Every year, he's super annoying. Ariana's the one who, like, absolutely dunked on him that one time. But she was sitting with all of you, so maybe it's guilt by association. <laughs> oh, hey, Lozrin, right? Yes, a Lozrin. We're all going to war. I always said this would be particularly exciting. I'm studying war magic. Great, so you'll be on the fireball line. No, I'm thinking of doing something far more sophisticated. Fireball is a boring spell. Oh, it's an obvious spell. Every it's the first, th it's the first spell of that circle that every every student learns. Okay, what do you know? What do you? What's your best spell? 
Well, I'm going to be working on creating a high magic induction field so that multiple spell matrices can be woven together to create a larger effect. Perhaps a defensive matrix that can reduce the effectiveness of incoming enemy arcane energy. I'm still working on the theory, but it's going to be much grander and much more exciting than a fireball. Sounds effective. Oh yeah, that's really interesting. Wait, tell me more about- wait, she's like looking at his books? <laughs> you got notes? You got games on your phone? Wait a minute. Yes, yeah. Uh, high magic, it's, a, it's an alpha art. Uh, I'm studying the spell right now to generate the induction field. Everyone else just needs to know a little thing. You're aware of how sorcerers are able to modify their spells in, in an impromptu fashion. Wizards obviously have to do things in a more sophisticated, controlled, calculated fashion. And combining so many different spell matrices at once takes quite a bit, which is why high magic was invented. It's a, a system of modulation that allows multiple people using the same basic principles to combine their energy into one space. What's that, Mason? <laughs> Mason's oh. just like, not like scowling at him, but it's like, that was a weird way to word that, but uh, go on, sure. And then he's going to take out a uh, parchment and write down some book titles. This is everything that I've been checked out. If you want to do all the research, I'm busy actually implementing this, but this is this is all the essentials. Have I read any of these books? I don't probably not. Not because they're too advanced for you. You've got a freaking like plus 10 to your arcana score. Um, <laughs> yeah. But they've just not been something that you that has come up in your research. It's just not an area that you've gone into. Can I, can I roll to nerd out with him, even though I don't out yeah. of character know what the fuck <laughs> sure. he's roll, roll an arcana check. That was a terrible roll, but it's decently high. <laughs> <laughs> Plus 11 elves a lot. Yep, no big deal or anything. Yeah, so the, the two of you, it's not something that you have ever heard of, but what he's explaining is, you know how when you cast a spell, you weave the energy into a spell matrix of mm -hmm. your own? This is just a way, instead of each person weaving an entire spell matrix, it's like they do a one little part, and then it gets combined into one, one like, combined pattern. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to nerd out with him for friendship cool. reasons. <laughs> yep, roleplay reasons, you've now nerded out with him. Mason, you're standing there, and he's ignoring you except when you're talking. Like, if you, if you don't talk, he's pretending you don't exist. If you talk, he immediately will, like, acknowledge you, but otherwise he just forgets that you're there. That's like a fire with Mason. I guess Mason would be like, uh, did you want a, a circle of, of mental blessings for the both of you? Would that help, you think? Oh, it's a Mordain tea. Please <laughs> <laughs> no, no, save that for I special occasions, the Garnet. Matrix. <laughs> and that uh, conversation goes on. I mean, it's a loser, and he'll, he'll talk for hours, if permitted. Wait, what's his last Do we know his last name? Um, Roll a history check. Although, you were there when, when the whole bomb got dropped about him being the potential heir of the Academy, yeah, right? Yeah, like, I, I know the heir thing, but yeah. I'm just curious if he's ever said his last uh, name. He's never said his last name. But, by picking up context, you know that his last name is An Nenri. He is the son of the king of the elven refuge of Nenri, which is renowned for using enchantment magic on mortals in order for their own protection. On, like, oh. humans and such in the area. Hmm. And what do you want to do when you graduate, along with the, all the small talk we're probably doing? Mm. Wow, this is all great. What are you going to do after you graduate? Well, I intend to continue my studies as far as they'll take me here. And then once at that point, if that doesn't work out, um, I suppose I'll have a high rank within the Muin Teori unless I go back home and continue my studies there uh, independently with my own facility, my own tower, do some independent spell research. Come up with a few things that'll be named after me. Messages Mason and says, basically, Pepe laugh he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> he lacks critical information. He lacks the critical information. Should, should we tell him? No, we, we shouldn't tell him. We shouldn't tell him. Ooh, he doesn't know. <laughs> Pepe laughing in message. As he <laughs> Pepe laughs in message. On on. <laughs> um, Alistair, do you have an uh, affiliation, like a club here that you frequent? What? Oh, no, they're tiresome. Boring. Terribly boring. What, what do you mean? We do research like this at the Codex all the time. 
hold on processing this like intelligent explanation of whatever right. some of the research we've done really i didn't get that impression because athlor is in there <laughs> well he doesn't do the research Chris and i and and inserts characters that have helped mm-hmm. with research mm-hmm. have done that if you've been drafting any papers, I would take a look at them just to see if there, you know, if there's anything going on there. Drafting papers? Oh, like you, you want a contract? No, no. I mean to see your work, to see the sort of research that you're doing, just to see if well, it's on the if, if if it's interesting. Well, if you want abstracts, I can get those printed out, or you can I can set up a meeting with you in Cryos to go over everything in person if you prefer. I can read the abstracts on my own time. That's better for me. Okay, I'll I'll mail those over to you then. Perfect, good, and um, I'll send over the rest of the the reading list. And looks at the reading list, flips it over, writes something down, hands it back. Okay, I'll uh, memorize these. Uh, that's my room number. If you ever want to discuss research, that might be productive. That might be interesting. Yes. All right. <laughs> just <laughs> and he just walks off. <laughs> Mason, just visible confusion. Let the record show on this day a non hostile interaction with the Lozer occurred. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of looks at Mason with these like broad eyes. Wow, he's really smart. Y- yeah, but. I mean, so normally, are you, but you don't usually learn out about this stuff. Normally, you that wouldn't be your reaction to that kind of situation. Well, he, he knows how to combine, like, multiple spells together. I mean, I w- I've been wanting to do something like that just to shoot a nuclear bomb at, towards Alex or something like that. I thought I was going to have to research that on my own, but this guy's already done it. Oh, so, you, okay. I, 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 I think I get it now. You're excited at the research that he's doing in terms of the benefits that it can have on the Academy? And I love collaboration! Our- Okay, I, we're all yeah. collaborating here, right? We are collaborating. Hopefully, I mean that's that's the goal. That is yeah. the goal. Messages, Mason, and collaborating with a potential heir of the Archmage is also fun. And there super we beneficial. go. That's yep. Or get. I mean, we're on the, the same page here. You know, I don't need to say these here. things out loud. You know, we're on the. We've been on the same page, Mason. We're both very smart people. Okay. Yes. It's you know, <laughs> these the you know these ulterior motives aren't my strong suit. I, I'll admit. Ah, oh, there's multiple motives. It doesn't have to be ulterior. It doesn't have to be sussy. It's That's just not kind of what ulterior means. There, no, you context. just you're making it sound like I have <laughs> other motives. The main there's motive is motive, research. Then... That's research. It's research collaboration. <laughs> And keeping in everyone's good books, especially if they become the Archmage, you know, you never know. You never know. I, yep, I agree. No, I, I, I do agree. It is important. It might be useful in a lot of different things. What now? At that moment, Garnet, words spring into your mind in a familiar voice that I can't do, so I'm not going to try. Underood under attack by infernal forces, met uncle's real form, come ASAP. Hope your mission went well. Fighting alongside sage and father. Kisses. You can respond to this message. Who the fuck is sending kisses? Athelor. Ew! (laughs) (laughs) Just like email... Tone and context are difficult to send in sending messages, so I'm just going to let that lie as it oh, is. Oh, it's like XOXO. Is... Yeah, except you <laughs> said kisses out loud. Ew, that's cringe. <laughs> Did Mason get the same message? Nope. Sending only hits one person. Oh. Yeah, I just got kisses. That was the only thing in my message. <laughs> <laughs> uh... That was the last episode. <laughs> Do you just see like Garnet like ew what kisses? Oh fuck! Uh, mm-hmm. There's a fucking uh, underroot attack going down what, by the what? Infernals. 
Oh. Right oh, now. Oh, I know that I know the teleportation circle. Do you want to just go? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Should we yes? bring back Should up? we Yeah, it's I was same page. Probably. Mm. Or at least inform people. I, as many people as we can, right? Well, that's so annoying. I don't want to bring her. What? Uh, I mean, uh, they're just so busy. Okay, you said two completely separate. <laughs> Let's go to L now and see what to do from there. Okay. Okay. All right, let's go. And as our heroes reluctantly make their way all the way back up that they've been walking to the office, we shall go to a short break. When we return, the situation with Andrude intensifies. More Book of Dawn, Ioth Academy, right after this. <laughs> 